for joining us this morning. This is a special Sunday as we will celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And I believe this morning we, we will give our best to Him. Amen. Um, and the other day I read a quote, um, and I believe it is from FGF Seattle Instagram. If you haven't followed, go follow. <laughs> and it says that the churches all around the world this Sunday will be empty. But so is the tomb of Jesus Christ. Amen. And this Easter, we will not use an excuse of empty churches to not celebrate the empty tomb. So this morning, um, we will give our best. We will celebrate Him and we will worship Him. So let's join us for the worship.
song this morning. It's called Graves into Gardens. Oh, I searched the world, but it couldn't feel me. A man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along, then you came along And put me back together Oh, and every desire is now satisfied Oh, here in your love Oh, there's nothing better than you Nothing is better than you Nothing oh, oh, oh. Oh, I'm not afraid To show you my weakness All my failures and flaws Lord, you've seen them all And you still Cause the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. Oh, there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Lord, there's not. Yeah. Okay. 
forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood. for dying on a cross for us, Lord. We love you, Jesus. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Lord, who are we that you would love us in such a way? We thank you for just loving us, God. Today be a reminder that we are nothing without you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You're amazing. Jesus, He is alive. 
We thank you, Jesus. We praise your name on high, God. Thank you, Lord. In your name we pray. Come on. Do you believe that his love is for us? Amen. That he has risen from the dead? Yeah. Right? And now we're standing redeemed. Redeemed. Redeeming his love. Thank you, Lord. All of our sins are gone. Amen. Because he has overcome the grave. Come on, let's sing it out. It wasn't for nothing that you shed your blood. So I'm gonna live like my shame is gone. You won't be shackled to the way I was. I'm gonna live like my chains are gone, gone. Now my sin is dead and gone. And I sing Cause your time is up I'm gonna live like the stone is gone Gone Now my sin is dead and gone And I sing hallelujah Done, done He is risen in his And I sing hallelujah Come on Oh, 
Stop there and you won't stop now, Jesus. More amazing things will come and it's all because of you, Lord. King Jesus, take joy in our worship this morning. Take joy, Lord. We love you so, so much. We honor you. This is our adoration to you, Lord, this morning. It was supposed to be a day of mourning, a day of defeat. It was a day for the critics and skeptics to point the finger with smug satisfaction and declare, your savior was a fraud. His death has proven it. He is buried, he is gone, and he will be forgotten. It was supposed to be a day of darkness and a day of grief, a day when broken and confused followers felt lost and overwhelmed with hopelessness. Even those who went to visit the tomb that day expected to find nothing more than a lifeless body. It was supposed to be a day of sadness and weeping. You transformed it into a day of rejoicing, a day of victory, a day when the children of God can shout with confidence, He is alive, He is risen, and He will never be forgotten. This day has driven out all darkness and grief, erased all sin and shame. A day when followers of the true Savior are flooded with purpose, promises, and hope. This day echoes through the halls of history as the day our King crushed the head of the snake, tore through the chains of death itself, and claimed mankind for His kingdom. Tears of despair have become tears of overwhelming joy. For the Lord, Jesus Christ, has made this day of sorrow into a day of worship. Thank you all for tuning again. I want to wish you a blessed Resurrection Sunday. I also want to acknowledge that I am so grateful for our small team with me here this morning. I want to thank you for your relentless ministry and uh, service to our community. We are on part two, on a two-part series. Uh, so if you missed last week's message, The Empty Heart, you can go back to our website, ifgfseattle.org, and listen to our last Sunday's message. So this week, the message is called Empty Tomb. 
Last week we discussed what happened to Jesus between Friday to Sunday morning prior to his resurrection. What happened to you and to me when all seemed lost and when all seemed to not make sense about God? The culture around us is trying to convince us that our faith in Jesus is all a lie, all hopes lost, all promises empty. This morning, some of you tuning in, this may be your first time listening to a sermon and you have never understood about God. Some of you might have been to church before, but for some reasons or another, you have given up Christianity because of hurts, misunderstanding, disappointments, and you are wrestling about your faith. I want you to stay tuned with me over the next 15 minutes as I unpack about Jesus. And I pray that at the end of this message, you will find yourself reaffirmed about Jesus. And I hope that as I share today's message, it will reveal to you not only principle, but the person of Jesus. The foundation of our Christian faith lies in the resurrection of Jesus. So the question today to you and for me is that did the resurrection of Jesus happen? Did it really happen or it was all a lie? Today I want to show you two evidences. One is from the Word of God and another one is uh, factual evidences surrounding the event that is outside of the, the, the Word so that you can see that the resurrection of Jesus wasn't a lie. When we go back to last week, we were talking about the, the time between the crucifixion to the resurrection for the disciple of Jesus that had been following him for three over years and they put their hope in Jesus and they were thinking that Jesus was going to build a new kingdom on earth and they will reign together with Jesus and then suddenly on that Friday afternoon all of their hope, all that makes sense to them were crushed when Jesus was crucified and the leader that they have followed now died. To them, it does not make sense. All hope lost. Victory was nothing but a lie. Jesus was a hoax. And their belief in Jesus became nothing. It was two days of silence, two days hopes lost. Victory was nothing but just an illusion. Even the disciples of Jesus were lost, afraid, and disillusioned. In John chapter 20, verse 19, John chapter 20, verse 19, it says that that evening, the disciples gathered together because they were afraid. They were afraid of what they do not know. They were afraid of the misunderstanding. They were afraid of the lies. They were afraid of so many things. Can you imagine what is going through their mind? They couldn't wrap around their mind. They were so disillusioned because the, the master, the Lord, the teacher that they have served and walked and lived life together suddenly gone. Verse 19, And because they were afraid of reprisal from the Jewish leaders, they had locked their doors to the place where they met. Listen, guys. Like all of us today, we are staying home, keeping our physical distance. This does not mean that we are cowards. Yes, we may be lost, we may be afraid and confused during this time. But let me tell you, Jesus can enter into your dwelling place and made his presence in our dwelling place. In verse 19, let's continue reading, okay? He says, when the disciples of Jesus were afraid and they locked their doors, they are putting themselves in shelter in place. <laughs> Suddenly, Jesus appeared among them and said, Peace to you. Peace to you. To those of you audiences tuning in from all over the world, you are home. You are locking your doors. You are putting yourself in shelter. Jesus can enter into your home. Jesus can enter into your dwelling place. Jesus can enter in the midst of your family. And when he come into your family, when he came and enter into your dwelling place, he will bring with him his presence. And in his presence, there is fullness of life. 
And when Jesus enter into your, into your family circumstances, when Jesus enter into your dwelling place, peace has come and enter into your place too. Yeah. Friday, Saturday, our Christianity was tested. Was this Jesus a hoax? Can Jesus really pull off what he said he will do? Good morning, guys. Good news. Jesus was raised from, the, from his death and his resurrection did happen. Hallelujah. We celebrate today because Jesus did what he said he would do and he fulfilled what he promised to do, that he will die for you and for me. He will be crucified. He will die a horrendous death to pay for your sin. But that's not the end of the story. Friday was not the end of the story. On the third day, on that Sunday morning, the tomb was empty. Jesus was nowhere to be found. He wasn't stolen. His body wasn't stolen. But he was resurrected from the death so that he can conquer death. Therefore, today we can say, Hey, death, death, where are you? Where is your sting? For you have no more power over me because Jesus had conquered our final enemy, which is death. Jesus did what he said he would do. John chapter 20, you can read the whole chapter and you will see that what he promised to do, he did fulfill those promises. Okay, okay, maybe some of you are still not convinced. Maybe you, you said, are you sure? How can I be sure that Jesus was resurrected? Wasn't that a conspiracy theory? I don't know how many of you asked that question. I have two points today that I want to make. Number one. Number one, open up with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It's okay. It's okay to question about your faith. It's okay to wrestle with your faith. I believe that in your struggle to find the answers, your questions and your struggle and your experiences will lead you to Jesus. So number one, there are witnesses. There are witnesses. In fact, there are hundreds of witnesses. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul wrote this. And I want to share with you beginning in verse 3. For I have shared with you that I have received and what is of utmost importance. Paul was being personal when he wrote this. Paul said that I received it myself too. I saw it, I witnessed it, I experienced it, I encountered it myself. I encountered what? I encountered the resurrected Jesus. And this is an utmost importance. The Messiah died for our sin, fulfilling the prophecies of the Scriptures. He was buried in a tomb and was raised from the dead after three days, which is today as foretold in the scriptures. So these are all foretold in the scriptures, in the book of Isaiah, in the Old Testament. The prophets have already prophesied over what is coming through Jesus Christ. Verse 5, Then he appeared to Peter the rock and to the twelve apostles. So Jesus met and appeared. His resurrected self appeared to Peter. I know if he only appeared to Peter, you might question could Peter be disillusioned? Is he hallucinating? But no, Peter was not the only person that met with Jesus. They are the other disciples that met with Jesus. Verse 6. He also, listen to this and watch this. He also appeared to more than 500 of his followers at the same time. Some people said that maybe the disciple of Jesus was hypnotized. But let me tell you, I know psychologically speaking, there is no way 500 people could be hypnotized at the same time. There is no way that 500 people can be hallucinating of the same thing and seeing the same thing. Verse 7, uh, verse 6, let's continue verse 6. He, his, he appeared to more than 500 of his followers followers at the same time, most of whom are still alive as I write this. So when Paul wrote 1 Corinthians, these witnesses, these eyewitnesses, these direct witnesses are still alive. How many of you were alive when September 11 happened? Right? I, 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 I have to tell you, 
I can tell you exactly minute by minute what I did that morning. For a thing that substantial, for that thing so, so big, when you are alive and you pass through that, you will never forget it. You will always be clear and, 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 and remember it very clearly what's going on. I bet you, you know, I was telling my children, you know, they are in uh, high school, middle school, elementary school. I was telling them, you know, you know how hard it is to study history, right? When I was studying history, I have to remember the dates of when World War II began, when World War II and when is the Independence Day, what happened in the Independence Day. You know, it's so hard to remember that. Why? Because we are just reading. We're just reading a story that is in the past. But I bet you, to those of you kids that are listening in, in, maybe you are in elementary school, you are in grade school, middle school, high school. I bet you. Can I say bet? I, okay. I promise you. I promise you. This is a church. I forgot, you know. I cannot say bad, right? But I promise you that maybe 10 years from now, you will remember what happened when the coronavirus hit our life. I promise you, you will always remember it. You will always remember it. You will tell your, maybe when you were married next, when you are married next time, you will tell your children, hey, you know what? A papa lost six months of school. Yay! <laughs> you know what mommy did? We were stuck at home. Your grandmother teach me how to cook, how to sew. You will always remember it, kids. Why? Because you are witnessing it because you are experiencing it. So the same way with all these disciples when Paul was writing the book of Corinthians, these people, they are eyewitnesses. They saw the crucifixion. They saw what happened. They saw that Jesus was buried. It, it was the biggest news in Jerusalem. And now suddenly they saw, they saw the resurrected Jesus, they experienced that Jesus was alive. Do you think they will, they will ever forget that? I don't think so. Verse 8, verse 7, sorry. Then he appeared to Jacob and to all of the apostles. Last of all, he appeared to Paul in front of me like one born prematurely ripped from the womb. Listen, guys. There's so many evidences from the Word of God. You can, you can read it. There's so much thing going on. Uh, of course, today I can't cover all of this. Maybe we can create a Bible study just to uh, show you the evidences that Jesus is real. He wasn't a hoax. He did what He said He would do. And He fulfilled what He promised to do. Number two. These are evidences. There are evidences outside of the Bible. They are factual evidences. Here, I want to read a couple of. Uh, uh, I want to read a couple of uh, letters uh, from Josephus. Uh, Josephus is a Jewish historian and a Jewish military commander. So he wasn't really a disciple of Jesus. He was kind of a third-party guy witnessing all of this thing from the outside, and he wrote this. He says Josephus writing for the Roman government in the 70s AD. So he was alive during Jesus' time. Rec records some incidental things regarding Christ and the church. Josephus confirms that John the Baptist died at the hand of Herod. So that means John the Baptist was alive. He, he, he was real. He, he was there. And Herod, which was the king at that time, he was there too. He was alive. He's a real person. And this same incident is recorded in the gospel, as well as the death of the brother of Jesus. James was real. He was alive too, who was called Christ, and his name was James. He delivered them to be stoned. And you can read this in his book, Josephus, Antiquities of the Jews. Another example that I want to read to you, he says, about 20 years after Josephus, still the same generation, we have the Roman politicians, two politicians called Pliny and Tacitus, who held some of the highest offices of the state at the beginning of the second century AD. So these things are still quite fresh. It's still quite recent. From Tacitus, we learn that Jesus, and again, this wasn't really Jesus' follower. They, they were not um, biased. They were, they were impartial. 
uh, because they are government officials. And this is what they said. From Tacitus, we learned that Jesus was executed while Pont- Pontius, Pilate, Pontius Pilate was the Roman prefect in charge of Judea, AD 26 to AD 36. And Tiberius was emperor, AD 40, 14 to AD 37. And these reports fit with the time frame of the Gospels. So outside of the Bible, outside of the Word of God, there are also evidences of people, government officials, that, that gave an account that Jesus was a real character. He wasn't a, a folk tale. He wasn't just a story that people created, but he was real. He is a real person. He was there in real life. People saw it. People experienced it. People being touched by him could testify it. Uh, I was just looking for another evidence, you know, uh, just for fun. I, I'm, I don't know. This is just for fun, you know. Uh, there, there is also an evidence, archaeological evidence, where they found uh, Simon Peter's house in Capernaum. Uh, I think if you visit that place in Capernaum, you will be able to see some of the artifacts there. So from the above few examples, I know there are a lot of examples. You can read it. I'm not going to touch it today. There are archaeological evidences, historical facts, existence of eyewitnesses, geographical findings, we can conclude that what Jesus said about himself is true. And his resurrection did happen. Therefore, how many of you learn the if and the then? And then you learn philosophy, you know? How many of you love philosophy? Yuck. I hate that. But from that, I only learned one thing. is this cause and effect. He says, if Jesus were, was true, people could identify him as a real person and his resurrection did happen and people saw his resurrected body. Therefore, we can trust that Jesus is real. And therefore, what Jesus said is true. And therefore, Jesus is God. I don't know if I violate the philosophical formula, but there's a lot of therefore for you, okay? (laughs) I want to add my message today with the following verse. I want you to carefully watch this. This is amazing. This is very profound. This can be find, uh, found in Acts chapter 5, and I'm going to finish up with these verses, okay? This is at the uh, uh, trial of Peter and the disciples. They were gathered. They were arrested because they were preaching about Jesus. This is after Jesus was already uh, uh, resurrected, and this is, he already went back to heaven, and his disciples are studying uh, the, 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 the early churches uh, at that time. And, and Peter uh, was preaching about Jesus and he was arrested. You know, he was arrested and this is his trial, basically. Verse 34. He says, A Pharisee named Gamaliel, the teacher of the law, he was part of the council, he was a reputable man, who was honored by all the people, stood up in the Sahandrin and ordered that the man, who is the man? The man are the Pe- Peter and the disciples that were being arrested at the time to be put outside for a while. He said, hey, put them outside because I have something to say to you guys, this council. Verse 35. Then he addressed the Sahendrin, the council. Man of Israel. Listen to this. This is really amazing. Again, Gamaliel wasn't a follower of Jesus. In fact, he was a Pharisee. You know, He, he was a hypocrite, right? But listen to what he said. This is amazing. Men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do to this man. Verse 36. Some time ago, Tudus, another religious leader, appeared claiming to be somebody and about 400 men rallied to him. They have followers, 400 followers of Tudus. He was killed. And all of his followers were dispersed. And it all came to nothing. Verse 37. After Tudus... Judas, this is not Judas, the one that betrayed Jesus. This is another Judas, the Galilean, appeared in the day of the census and led a band of people in in revolt. He too was killed and his followers were scattered. Listen, verse 38, remember that therefore, therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave this man alone. Let them go. For if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. If Jesus is merely man, if Jesus wasn't God, this will fail. 
Take a look at Judas. Take a look at Judas. Don't worry about this man. Why do you want to put their blood in your hands? Just release them. They will be gone. Verse 39. Listen, guys. This is very important. But if it is from God, but if it is from God, you will not be able to stop this man. You will find yourself fighting against God. Hey guys, here we are, 2,000 years later. The church of God are thriving, and the disciples of Jesus are still growing. And here we are celebrating. Why? Because we are not following man. We are following God. Come on. Hallelujah. This is the good news, that Christ died as the perfect sacrifices to pay for our sin. By accepting Christ's sacrifice, our sin are washed away. And we have new birth. Praise God for this good and perfect gift. Amen? Jesus promised what He would do. He, he would come to this world to die for our sins, and He would die for us. And on the third day, He would raise from the dead so that we may have life forever and ever. And He did exactly that. He did exactly what he said he would do. He is now alive, seated in the heaven, reigning over this world. And this same Jesus is now pursuing you. And he loves you. And he wants to give you life. Today, I want to invite the worship team to come forward as we prepare ourselves to partake on the Holy Communion as we prepare our hearts to receive this Holy Communion as a reminder of what Jesus had done on the cross. But I want to pray. I want to pray for you. I want to invite, there is an invitation this morning that Jesus really loves you. Listen, it doesn't matter your life background. You may have, you may have been away from church. You may have run away from God or you may have despised God because of what happened to you. You are hurt. Your hurt is real. Your tears are real. But today, that same Jesus that is full of grace and compassion, full of mercy, He loves you. He loves you. And He is pursuing you. Yes, He is pursuing you, even in, in your own home, even in your comforter, wherever you may be. He is pursuing you. He is running after you because He loves you so much. Today, if you are tuning in, and maybe you have never heard a sermon like this, or you have never heard a sermon at all, uh, just because maybe you know some of these wonderful guys here, you are friends of these people here on screen, uh, and then your friends uh, maybe all over the world say, hey, come, tune in into this YouTube. You'll be able to see Billy sing, Nicole sing, and then you just tune in because you don't know what's going on, and then suddenly you heard this message that Jesus loves you, and then your heart was burning. Something is you know, moving in your heart. You know what? That is God calling you. I want you to just... Take a, make a decision this morning. Make a decision to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior over your life. And He has conquered death so that you don't have to fear death anymore. If you want to receive Jesus today, I did this on Friday. It was such a wonderful thing. I, I say congratulations to Odon, to Jacob uh, who received Jesus. We are very happy for you. But this morning, there is another opportunity. If you want to receive Jesus, you know what to do, right? Find that emoji that looks like a hand like this and just click it if you want to receive Jesus for the first time in your life. Which you just, I want to give you time. Just, just click it, emoji hand like this. I think there is an example in your screen, right? Um, to those of you who are also tuning in just today and you miss Friday, I also want to take this time to pray for you. Uh, maybe some of you are hurting because there is disappointments, there is betrayal. Maybe there are fear, real fear, coronavirus fear, pandemic fear, fear of the unknown, fear of the future. Or maybe some of you today, even though we were talking about the presence of God coming to your family, you don't have family because you have broken family. There are conflicts in your family. And I want to pray too because Jesus can bring restoration over families, right? To those of you who are financially struggling right now, 
you were struggling before the pandemic and now with the pandemic your financial struggle becomes more magnified i want to pray for you too right because i believe right now even as i was speaking jesus is his presence is dwelling in your living rooms in your rooms and he is bringing peace over you just like what we had read read in john chapter 20 if you want to be prayed just send your hearts send your hearts amen your that red heart emoji just click it would you are we okay all right let's pray to those of you who wants to receive jesus for the very first time wherever you may be can you say this prayer with me dear lord jesus Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross to pay for my sin, to redeem me from death to life. And because of your resurrection, I have stood on your victory. Today, Jesus, I receive you and I declare you that you are my Lord, you are my Savior. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name. Congratulations to those of you who received Jesus. Hey, can you do me a favor? Yeah. Can you do me a favor? Because we can't see you. Sometimes we don't know who you are. If you can go to ifgfseattle.org slash pray and type in your information there. We would love to reach out to you. We would love to just connect with you and pray with you and answer any of the questions that you have about Jesus, about resurrection, about anything that you have about Jesus. Amen? Would you do that? And I want to pray to those of you who have already sent your hearts emoji. There's a, about eight of them. Would you just bow your heads? Heavenly Father, in the midst of all of this uncertainty, just the same way as the disciples of Jesus 2,000 years ago, as they look upon the cross, they didn't know. They didn't understand what their future looks like. They were just so disillusioned. They, was, they were just so lost. They were just so afraid. They have left everything. They have left everything for Jesus. And now they have nothing. The Jesus that they have followed and put their life into is God. Maybe the same way with you. You, you feel dark, you feel lost, you feel disillusioned, you lost sleep. Father God, I want to pray right now, the same way with the disciples in John chapter 20, as they lock their doors and they put themselves into shelter in place. But yet, Jesus, you can appear into their homes. Today, Father God, I declare that same presence of God will come into every homes, into every families, into every individuals, wherever they may be, in their rooms, in their living rooms, in, in their dorms, or wherever you are. I pray, Jesus, that your presence has come into their living spaces. And when your presence has come, you will bring peace and understanding into their lives. You will give them hope because, Jesus, you are hope. You are life. Thank you so much, Lord, for today as we prepare our hearts to give and to just receive your bread and your cup, Father God. Just continue to dwell in His presence. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're just going to sing one song. As you prepare, maybe you have not prepared your bread or if you have a wafer, if you have chips, you have uh, cookies, um, you can now take it, go to your kitchen, go grab it as we uh, sing this song. Amen.
is forming me. Jesus. Are you guys ready with your bread and with your cup? Let's pick up our bread. This bread is a symbol of Jesus' body that was broken for you. His body was broken so that you can be made whole. And by His wounds, we are all healed. Would you just lift up your bread wherever you are at right now? Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord Jesus. For your sacrifices on the cross Or you pay for the consequences of sin with your death So that we can have life and life forevermore Thank you Jesus for what you had done on the cross And today we celebrate your resurrection Because you have won the victory We have stood on your victory Oh Jesus to those of us who are sick right now, I pray that you will give them healing in the name of Jesus. That the healing grace of God will touch you wherever you are at right now and be healed in the name of Jesus. And by your wound, Jesus, that we are healed. Thank you so much, Lord, as we partake on this bread. We do it, we eat it in remembrance of you. Let's eat this bread. Let's lift this cup. This cup is a symbol 
of God's blood, of the blood of Jesus. And because of His blood, it provided a way of a new covenant, a new relationship, a new way into Jesus and that relationship with Jesus. The blood of animal, the blood of ritual, the blood of habits will never be able to remove our sin. Yes, it can cover your sin, it can hide your sin, but you will still be condemned. But when Jesus came and He poured out His blood, He said that He entered into that most holiest place and He sacrificed His blood once and for all. His blood is able to remove our sin from the east to the west, from red to white. He forgives your sin and He remembers your sin no more. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord Jesus. We enter into this relationship with you not because of our behavior, not because of our minds, not because of our qualification. We enter into this relationship with you by your blood, Jesus. Only because of you that we are able to enter into this relationship, this new covenant with you. Thank you so much for your grace, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your blood. For your blood is able to wash our sin. Though it's as red as a crimson sin, you can wash it white as snow again. You forgive all of our sin and you remember it no more. As we drink this cup, we drink it in remembrance of you. Let's drink this cup. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for all of my brothers and sisters all over the world that are tuning in right now. I speak blessing over you and may the countenance of the Lord Jesus Christ shine upon you, your family, your children, their children, and their children's children. Therefore, Father God, as we depart from here, the light that has shined into us, Father God, will be shown throughout the world. Jesus, may you protect us May you keep us in our going and coming. May you protect us as we put ourselves in our homes. Jesus, you keep us safe and this pandemic will be over. And once again, Father God, we can come together and we pray this and we give honor and exaltation, the name above every name. That is the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. And please, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please subscribe it so that you will receive notification in our next live event uh, next week in our live stream. And to those of you who, um, you know, who are very touched or you are being moved by the service today, by the song that we sing and the, the message, please forward it to your friends and share with them the gospel of Jesus Christ so that they can find hope in Jesus through. Please be safe, everyone. Stay at home. And I will see you again in another day. God bless you.